appeal to put on the application of the Lord Brown and Secretary of State for the Home Department. Lord Tilson will explain the decision of the court. The procedural rules about bringing appeals in asylum cases are complex. The present appeal concerns one aspect of them. Under Section 94 of the Nationality, Immigration and Asylum Act 2002, the Home Secretary has power to designate a state as one where there is, in general in that state or part, no serious risk of persecution of persons entitled to reside in that state or part of that state, and removal to that state or part of persons entitled to reside there will not, in general, contravene the United Kingdom's obligations under the Human Rights Convention. The fact of doing so, that if a person who is entitled to reside in that state applies for asylum, if the application is refused, and if they appeal, the Home Secretary is bound to certify that the appeal is clearly unfounded, unless she is satisfied that that is not the case. The effect of certifying an appeal as clearly unfounded is that the appeal cannot be pursued in this country. In other words, the fact that there's an appeal pending won't prevent the appellant from being removed in the meantime. The respondent to this appeal, Mr Brown, is a citizen of Jamaica. He arrived in the UK on the 7th of May 2010 on a visitor's visa. Uh, he subsequently applied for asylum on the ground that he's a homosexual and feared persecution if he, return, if he were returned to Jamaica. On the 20th of October 2010, he was detained pending a decision on removal. This was done under a fast track procedure applied in the case of uh, claimants from countries on the list of states designated under Section 94. Jamaica uh, had been added to the list in 2003. Mr. Brown complained through his solicitors that it was unlawful to detain him and that the fast tracking process was unsuitable in his case. But his complaints were rejected by the Home Secretary. As a result, on the 15th of November, he issued a claim for judicial review seeking declarations on two matters. First, that his detention was unlawful, and second, that the decision to include Jamaica in the Section 94 list was unlawful. On the same day, the Home Secretary refused his claim for asylum, but did not certify it as clearly unfounded. That meant that he could continue to appeal the decision while remaining in the UK. He was released from detention, and in due course, the first tier tribunal upheld his claim that he was homosexual and at real risk of persecution if returned to Jamaica. But the judicial review proceedings continued because of the points raised uh, by the case. The facts found by the trial judge were that gays and other members of the LGBT community are at serious risk of persecution in Jamaica, that they make up some 5 to 10% of the population, and the rest of the population was not at such risk. Um, the trial judge dismissed the uh, respondents' complaints uh, on the ground that since the risk didn't affect 90% uh, or more of the population, uh, it um, wasn't a risk which existed in general. The Court of Appeal, by a majority, uh, reversed his decision uh, on that point. Uh, they unanimously decided that the respondent's detention had been unlawful on other grounds. The Home Secretary appeals now only on the uh, broader question um, uh, as to whether she was entitled on the facts to uh, certify that um, Jamaica 
was a country which satisfied the criteria for inclusion in the list. So on the facts, can it properly be said that there is in general no risk in Jamaica of serious risk to, no serious risk in Jamaica uh, uh, of uh, persecution of persons entitled to reside there? This court is unanimous uh, that the answer is no, but in reaching that decision, Lord Hughes takes a different approach from the other members of the court. Um, in uh, a judgment prepared by myself on behalf of the majority, uh, we explain that the section 94 of the Act is to be taken as referring to countries where its citizens are free from any serious risk of systemic persecution, either by the state or by non-state agents, which the state's unable or unwilling to control. The phrase in general differentiates persecution which occurs in the ordinary course of things from isolated instance of persecution. It doesn't require the persecution to affect any particular percentage of the population uh, to uh, require the group persecuted to exceed a particular percentage would be open to several objections. Uh, it's sufficient that persecution is a general feature of life in the country and applies to a recognisable section of the community. Lord Hughes, in the minority, uh, agrees that it would be impossible to lay down a defined percentage of the population which needs to be at risk before there exists in general a serious risk of persecution. persecution. Um, but he considers Secretary of State uh, shouldn't be prevented from designating a state under the Act simply because some form of grouping or recognisable section of the community may suffer persecution when in general that state is free from persecution. Uh, the result being, uh, because of the unanimity of uh, view uh, on the facts of this case, that the appeal is dismissed.